Grid Square borders are very similar to Grid Square connectors in that they slide underneath that first layer of the Grid Square base. But what they do is they finish off the outer edge so you can add walls and clip-ons to the outside edge of your um, Grid Squares. So let's get started. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the grid connectors video because grid borders are very similar to grid connectors and uh, we'll be building on what you learned there. And just like we did for the grid connectors, we're going to print out these grid borders and then glue them onto cardboard and cut them out. Now we're going to make three different ones. We're going to make a straight border, a corner border, and an inside corner border. And you're going to need a couple of tools. You're going to need a two sheet scoring sled and the four sheet scoring sled. And then you're also going to need your depth cutter that you made in the grid connectors video. Basically, a grid border is just sort of like a single sided grid connector with an extra decorative border. Now that border on the outside there is two four sheet wide strips of foam board. And then you have a two sheet wide strip on the bottom and the one sheet wide strip on the top that we're going to use our depth cutter to cut to size. And they connect into grid bases, just like grid connectors, except they go on the edges of your assemblies. Now that border on grid borders makes them so they're flush with the edge of wall connectors. You get a nice finished look. And it also allows you to clip on clip-ons to the edge of your modular grid tiles. So we'll start by making a straight border, that's the easiest one. And you'll need a piece of textured foam and a piece of untextured foam. And we'll start by gluing on the untextured piece into the dashed gutter there that's on the printout, right there. Just add some hot glue. And you can use your work surface to make this nice and perfectly straight and line up to the edge of the, uh, of the printout. Then once that's dry, we'll use our single sheet depth cutter to cut that to size. And then we'll use our two sheet scoring sled to cut out a strip of two sheet wide foam. And we'll glue this to the bottom of the border. And again, you can use a work surface to make that perfectly flush to the end of the border. There you go. Now it's ready for our decorative border, which is going to be two four sheet thick strips of foam board glued together and then attached. You do one textured and one untextured because you're only going to see that one piece of foam board. So you want to have a decorative piece on the outside and then you can just use an untextured piece for the inside. You're going to glue that together to make one stack. And then you're going to glue that on, making sure that the thicker of the two sheets of foam board are on the bottom of the border. Right, you want to have that thick piece facing down. Just glue on the steer decorative border. There we go. So when you're all done, you can have the thin sheet on the top and the thicker sheet on the bottom. And it's just a matter of cutting off the excess of the foam that hangs past the cardboard base and you're done. And it's ready for paint. These are really ideal to use a dip and dry paint method with. You can literally just dip the foam part into quick coat and uh, you're done. Now the procedure is very similar for the outside corner border. You're just going to essentially make two straight borders and then connect them together. So here I am doing the first strip of the foam board that is a single sheet thick using my single sheet depth cutter. I'm going 
blue on the other side. And make sure that's in good position. Now you'll notice since I have to cut this on the outside, I'm laying my depth cutter on top of a piece of cardboard to compensate for the fact that there is a piece of cardboard there underneath the strip. There you go. That's pretty good. Then we're going to take our two sheet thick piece of uh, strip of foam board and glue that to the bottom. All right, so now we got our single sheet thick strips on top and our double sheet thick strips on the bottom. Then we're gonna take that bundle we made, the four sheets thick bundle with the texture on the outside and glue that to one side of the corner. And we wanna have make sure that that piece overhangs a little bit so we can kind of have some to cover up the end of the border that we're gonna glue on the other side. And remember, we wanna have that thin strip on top and the thicker strip on the bottom. And we're going to glue it on, making sure it overhangs the back. There. That's good. And once that's dry, we're going to remove the, the back sheet of that decorative border. We don't need that. There you go. That'll butt right up against there, and once we trim it to size, it'll look really nice. Move that on. Perfect. It's just a matter of trimming off all the excess pieces. And you're done. One outside corner connector. Now the inside corner connector is very similar. We're gonna start the same way. We're gonna glue in a couple strips of foam board into that uh, dashed gutter, and then cut them down using our depth cutter. And then we're gonna add a two sheets thick strip onto the other side. Then we're going to add our border again, but, and it's the same way. It's just a piece of textured foam on the outside and untextured on the inside, and it's four sheets thick. You see here, I just noticed it was a little off, so I used my depth cutter again to adjust it. It's always better to do it before you put the border on. It just makes it easier. Then we're going to attach one side of the border. and then just attach the other side. We want to make sure that's pretty nice and clean. So that way the corner will, will look nicer. That's better. And just glue it in place and trim off and you're done. One inside corner connector. And you can also dip and dry this guy. As long as the foam gets covered in quick coat, you're good to go. You can also check out some other methods to paint these. There's a lot of tips and tricks to do that very easily and quickly in the Castles and Catacombs manual. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back. No questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com forward slash GameGearMaster. And a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much. And apologies if I mispronounced your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trino products, go to Patreon.com forward slash GameGearMaster.